Uh-huh. What you doing, Chris? Why you? What you? You in deep thought? He's thinking. <laughs> he is in deep thought. Just looking around. Just looking around. Mm-hmm. Drinking my water to try to stay dehydrated. dehydrated. Drinking my water, minding my business. Amen. Minding my business. <laughs> my black ass business. <laughs> no. Good water tastes really good. Bad water? No good. No bueno. When I pay my water bill every every month, because it used to be quarterly, now it's every month. It really pisses me off. No, it's it's low. It's low. It's not it's the the price hasn't changed. It's it's basically the same, but they, you know, send it out every month instead of quarterly. But every time I pay it, it 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 angers me. Why should you have to pay for water? Well, the same question is, why should we have to pay for fucking health care? But water, I get the health care to a point, but no. water. The in- infrastructure, no. getting it to you, the you know, chlorination process, the inf- you know, all that shit. It's a basic human right. Health care, water, food, you know, roofing over your head. Whether it be the cheapest of roofing, food in your stomach, health care, and water, the, the those are the basic necessities of life. It should be automatic. It should be automatic. It should be free and automatic for everyone in this world. Period. End of story. But That's even true. in other countries where they don't have crazy, they pay for health care. Like, you know, and it's 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 built into their taxes and they get real and, and they don't mind paying it because it helps. So you're still paying for it. So you're going to pay for health care regardless, but you shouldn't have to pay for water. <laughs> Why do I have to and then still go and buy water? Then I still gotta go and buy water. Yeah. You ain't got to do that in Italy. The water's beautiful out there. Look, all anyway. I'm saying is that in European Chris, countries, Chris. European countries such as Belgium, <laughs> such as Canada, um, that well, Canada's not Europe; it's North America. But I'll, I know for a fact in European countries such as Belgium, the Netherlands, and stuff, they everybody gets a stipend, a monthly stipend. Doesn't matter. They pay for that in taxes, it, but fine. I'll pay for my. I'll, I'll, Problem, exactly. problem with, with paying the taxes is it doesn't matter what you do for a living, how much money you make, and everybody across the board gets free health care, gets a monthly stipend to that you can take, you can use towards your rent, towards your mortgage, towards food, what have you. What country is that? I, I just, I was Belgium. reading about that. It was Belgium. It, Belgium has a monthly stipend. And the only reason why I know this is because I have a personal story and I'm not gonna say names, but there's, I, there's, there's someone in my family from Belgium that her parents wanted to come here. And oh, she, they heard they, 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 realized, they realized they didn't have, they had no clue that the United States did because most people from other countries think, oh, we're gonna go to the United States and we're gonna freaking have the best life ever. No, stay your ass right where you're at because you're good. They have a monthly stipend. They got free health care. Obviously, they pay into it, but it is what it is. They get free health care. They have a monthly stipend that they can use to buy food, put towards their rent, put towards their mortgage, the whole nine. Ain't getting that shit here. But, but, immigrants, but, but people, I mean, no, I shouldn't say immigrants. Illegal aliens, look at New York City. They'll just roll up over here and fucking sleep on the street, take over the hotels, and they get friggin' EBT cards, free food, free health care, free room and board, 
And you got people, you got our people living in the street, struggling. Same with Massa Cass. Please don't get me started because I'm just disgusted over that shit. Yeah, yeah, we, we can skip that one because I can't agree with that wholeheartedly. But um, let's get into Love is Blind then. Something that we can agree to get into. <laughs> yeah, let's get into it. Um, so we have the couples. All right, we we the reunion. This we is the reunion. Record, we didn't record last week. Obviously, my fault. My bad. I'm, I'm in a process. I'm in the process of renovating my kitchen. So sorry, I got shit going on. Um, but we've got. So we missed. We didn't talk about last week about the couples, the wedding. The wedding. Yeah. So we had Ariella and Ivandro. So let's let's just recap the couples. Ariel, Ariella and Ivandro, Mariella and Patrick, um, Leandro and Ingrid, Renata and Alexander, Vanessa and Leonardo, and then shout out to Muriel and Khalid, because they should have given well, I'm glad they gave them their flowers at the reunion because mm -hmm. they were the absolute stars of the show. Mary Ellen and uh, Khalid? Muriel and Khalid. Khalid. Why, but why didn't they have it? Why, why did they, why would you put the the big hair black woman and what's and and the other guy over <laughs> Muriel and Khalid? Because you're only allowed to have five stories, five couples mm -hmm. they have to. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you put that couple in there in, instead of the boring woman with the huge hair, the black girl with the huge hair, and the guy who looks disinterested? Who did he rape her? What did he do? You. It was, did he I rape her? Rape. You think he? You think he raped her, or touched her, or? Well, I mean the way she reacted because at first, okay, so oh, we're, we're going to the reunion, no, and let's, let's, so let's, she tells. All right, hold on. Before we go to the reunion, let's just. I'll just go down the list. So, um. Are we, we already know that Ariella and Evandro, that was a hell no, because that bitch is a fucking psycho. That marriage didn't happen. Um, and I still didn't like the way the narrative came out on, on that. They let her get away with a lot murder. of psycho stuff. Murder. They put it all on him. Ariella I mean, let, let her get away with stuff. They All those girls. Yeah, they all stood with her, and she's, she's straight yeah. psycho. Yeah, she's fucking diabolical. Then you had Mariella and Patrick, who both said no, not yet. Um, but then when it got to the reunion, he's, he's they're gay. Not Who's gay? Patrick. And we'll get to, we'll get to that. Then of course we hit we had Leandro and Ingrid who said yes at the at the weddings, but at the reunion that shit went south. We'll we'll start off on them. Then you have Renata and Alexander said yes. They're together still. They said yes at the wedding. They're still together, but in a non-monogamous friendship. They're not together. That was bullcrap. Yeah, stupid. Bull we'll talk about that because that's just fucking dumb. And then you have Vanessa and Le Leonardo stayed together. And yes, they're still together. Um, and then Khalid and Muriel that weren't part of the actual show show, but they, they gave them their shine. And allowed them to come and show up for five minutes and, you know, move on. So let's get into it. I'm glad, Chris, you said it with um, Leandro and Ingrid. Because the way she was cutting up at that reunion, she was like, "You, I told you not to touch me. I told you not to come near. And I'm no, saying, say, you waited till I was asleep. That one. Yep. And that made me think, the way she said it was that he waited till she was asleep to get on her. Now, he said that his problems were not physical, that they were mental. So it makes it sound like he can't get off unless it's by force a little or when a person is asleep. Because a lot of people are into that, like having sex when their partner is kind of doesn't know that they're doing it. That's what it sounds like. No? I, I I just I just don't understand. So she was saying he couldn't get it up, right? At, in the beginning, he couldn't get it up. At, you know the the um, honeymoon, he couldn't get it up. Right. So then he raped her or touched her. 
I think so, he maybe touched her inappropriately. No, 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 no. He no. didn't want to be touched. You know why I say that I think he actually did penetrate her is because she was so offended. And so she said, you totally disrespect me. And as a man who has sisters, but the reason why I feel it was that is because he could not get it up. And there are men and men who rape who can't get it up in a loving, calm situation. But when it's a little bit forceful on their own terms, that turns them on. Yeah. Yeah. So they never had sex before that? I don't, I I think they did, but I think it was hard for him to yeah. get it up and going or even sustaining it. They did have sex during the honeymoon or they that little, that little couple's vacation that they had. So, so sometimes you could I get remember, it up. Only because I remember um at one point like towards the end of the honeymoon, they were like really like she was very adamant of having the conversation with him about she's a very sexual person and she was like I'm in previous relationships. She had said in the past in previous relationships she was not going to just settle for just any old sex. Like, just because she's like, I just want the man to know that this is what I like. This is what we do. Da, 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 da. So I guess they had the conversation because at one point when they were on the honeymoon, they went and closed the door and they were like, told the camera crew, they were like, okay, good, good night and shut the door. And she was all teeth. That was it. Then fast forward to the reunion I mean, she met his family, obviously, which I knew that. She said her, his her. family did not support her. Yeah. It, uh, listen. He had when, eight, eight motherfuckers in that room. Remember that? He had a that big ass room and they're all sitting there. Uncomfortable and awkward. <laughs> well, because like, here's the thing. It's, it's leading me to believe because he has a little old room with a little twin bed. So it's like they must pool all their money together. I'm, I'm just I'm just going with different cultures. And I'm thinking like that family was like, so you fit to marry this girl. That's why they were so defensive. Like you fit to marry this woman and take take your share of the money out of this house. Like I think they were thinking like, what's she bringing to this house? What's she bringing to the table? Like her own she house. Take care of us. Her own house. That's what she's bringing to the table. They, they, I'm assuming they already knew that she's like, yeah, no, nah, y'all ain't moving up in here. This is my house. For me, my kids, and my husband, and that's it. So I think that that's why her, his people was kind of standoffish. Um, but at the reunion, I was stunned when she started talking and she was like, you know, talking about erectile dysfunction and I told you not to touch me. And she started getting all emotional. I'm saying, I'm sitting there watching and I'm like, bitch, just say it. Cause in my head, like you, Chris, I was like, I'm, it's leading me to believe that it was spousal rape. I mean, because they are technically legally married, I'm assuming, or I mean, I don't know how it works in Brazil, unlike here, but I'm like, did he like rape her? Like, did he do, did, did he commit spousal rape? Because he never fought her on it. She, she was going in and he's just sitting there like this. Mm-hmm. Looking sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, it was weird, his reaction, because he didn't have, his heart rate was like this even kill he didn't react but you know he was, I think he, was pre- prepared, he had prepared himself for it he knew I wouldn't have came he knew what she was going to say so he could either overreact and deny but that's not his personality either he doesn't seem like that type that's going to be really confrontational and, and go for the juggler so I think that he had really prepped himself to just not say anything and thinking that it could that she could go all the way and say the word or she could just have it as an you know innuendo and people have to you know guess either way if he's strong about it and says anything in denial you might be like well what is she talking about because she it still isn't clear because it's not like she came on social media and made it very clear and people are just guessing that this actually that's, happened. That's all you could do because really all you can do. She and then for, to make him leave, to make him leave because there must have been some serious allegations. That was Maybe. the only responsible thing they could do. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's leading me to believe that he, he, she, while she was sleeping, 
he took it upon himself to basically force himself on her. And that was it. And I'm assuming, I'm assuming, you know, Netflix and the whole Love is Blind franchise was like, bruh, both y'all got to get up out of here. We're going to continue. We'll, we'll take crazy ass Ariella over this bullshit because we don't need this stress. So I'm going to look them up. I didn't, you know what? I didn't look them up on um, in, Instagram. But I'm going to look them up and yeah. see. I'm going to look them up and see. I'm not, I don't care about Leandro, but I would love to see if um, Ingrid is still out there because she, listen, you can't just, you can't just like blindly accuse somebody of some bullshit and then just let that shit go. Like she's got to come out. Maybe it, maybe it has come out in Brazil, but you can't be doing, you can't be throwing that shit out. Well, the only thing we have as a disadvantage to us is that we don't understand Portuguese and we're not in Brazil seeing all the love is blind, what's happening, because something else happened. They said, they said to someone, you were getting dragged in the, in Brazil because of you did something to so, so-and-so. And I was like, oh, what happened? And, uh, and, and then somebody was saying you were being dragged for your accent. And I'm like, we don't exactly. know what the accent is. Exactly. <laughs> and, exactly. and so that went over our heads. Exactly. I don't know. I feel like with, with I would like to know more. I can understand if she just can't say it. But it was a bad decision on her part in the very beginning. Because yeah. she knew. I don't know why she said yes. He didn't have any money. And then she was like, he came with nothing, not a towel, not a face cloth. He came to her house with nothing. So you knew he had nothing. And you knew you wanted somebody that at least start here with you, not somebody that was down what here. She, yes. I don't know. I don't That's know. I don't care but he knew he was in love with her. He said he loved her. So He said he loved her and he fell in love with her. Then he also said during the, the reunion, like, you know, he, he he said he loved her, but then he was talking, you know, out of the side of his face too. Like, you know, you know, things were bad with, between us, you know, it, it was already over. And she's like, well, why didn't you leave? And then he was just like hemming and hawing. Like it, it, he didn't leave because he ain't got nowhere to go and he had no money. Thank you. I mean, come on, do the math. What, what, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming he would rather move into her nice house her nice fresh new newly built house or what's 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 your other option going back to your little high school looking room with your twin bed with your one little closet where 18 members of your family live in the house nah we're good yeah that was it was <laughs> I, don't know. This. I was stunned when i watched that wedding because i just knew i knew he was going to say yes but it just depended on who they were going to ask first. So I was like, I already know. I'm like, Ingrid ain't saying yes. I mean, your own um, priestess. Your pre yes, the priestess told him, no, this isn't going to work. Her sister is in that. The priestess is there. Like, boo boo, they done told you, and you still was like yes and cried. And I'm I'm sitting here on the couch like I she was hoping. I for the best, and she did not get that. Not, no. I don't get it. But she was, and, and again, I go back to what you said last, the week before last, Chris, about her age. So I wonder because I know she's still going with the she's thirty what two or something like that. Maybe I just I I've been thinking a lot no about way. that. I just, no, the, yeah, I gotta agree. I and I went back to I'm thinking they still, they still say she's thirty four. I'm thinking she's older, like you said, and maybe she said yes because she thought, you know what, maybe this could work. Um, I'm already at a certain age. Let me. Cause How do you no have way. a 20-year-old daughter, 21-year-old daughter, if you're 34? Yeah. No, wait, someone, hold on, let me pull it up, because someone commented on that on our YouTube, YouTube channel. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to see if I can find it. Hold on. It came up that that's not. Hold on, I gotta pull. Hold on, hold on. Give me, give me a minute. Give me a minute. Oh, did he get the? I'm like, oh, now it makes sense. Okay. Okay. Hold, hold the phone. Um, anyway, that's that couple. They are just. 
Something happened. He was so immature and just, he just I don't know. I don't know what made her say yes. So he didn't seem dynamic at all. He didn't seem like he had anything special about him. Very childlike. Yeah, just very simple. Okay. All right. So someone caught, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off. It said, hey, answering about Ingrid's age, and let's give a shout out to Veronica Sarah, oh, long ass name, Veronica Sarah. Veronica, go ahead. Yeah, Veronica Sarah 1109. She said, hey, answering about Ingrid's age, not all motherhood happens in the traditional way. Okay, we get that. In the case of her eldest daughter, motherhood, she adopted her. She ad she was Ingrid's cousin. Okay, and okay. She was Ingrid, so the, the oldest daughter is Ingrid's cousin, and okay. she she was the, the child was twelve, and Ingrid adopted her. Okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm she still she don't look thirty four. Mm -hmm. She still don't look thirty four to me. Well, I'm looking for now that I know. I mean, she 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 definitely still looks forty something to me. But if she says she, she actually looked better on the reunion without she took some of that hair down, so it she looked Thank better. You. I think it's all that hair that she had during the season that was just it, you know sometimes all that shit weighs your face down and it makes you look older than what you are. Um, it's a lot I of hair. Can see her possibly being thirty four, she's just kind of like an old spirit, but she needs to let that. She's got to get all that yarn out of her head because that ain't even freaking human hair that shit looked like yarn yeah okay so she she right. adopted all right. right so that makes right. sense. the makes oldest daughter is, is her cousin that she adopted but, but did they say that on the show because i totally missed that mm -hmm. no they didn't say so that maybe she didn't want to that maybe she just was like that's my those those are my daughters those are yeah. my kids you know I get it. I so get it. So what's the who's the next couple? Well, let's talk about that psycho bitch, Ariella and Evandro. Evandro I honestly fast forward Evandro them. got done dirty. That bitch was crazy. And all I'm gonna say about this is with the reunion, is that they had the audacity. All right, so that we obviously we all watched it. So the reunion they had the what someone from the couple, the women, get up and they showed like the picture of them together. And it was like, oh, if you stay together, go over and kiss your mate or kiss your mate or rub him or something or rub the picture. Or here's this little hammer. And yeah. if you didn't stay together, click the hammer in three, two, one. And so when it got to Ariella and Evandro, I was like, why are we even we already know how this shit show up? Come on. Why is there even a picture of it? Why do you have that crazy bitch holding a fucking hammer? Cause she could have easily ran across the stage. And bashed <laughs> Evandro in the head. He didn't do nothing. Okay, I shouldn't say he didn't do nothing. He was not good about, I mean, he was withholding shit and he wasn't forthcoming about this additional kid and all this other shit that he had going on. But that bitch was fucking psychotic. And they really, really well, he, even though like, for himself saying, saying, I don't like to open up to people. I mean, he should have opened up that you have children, but yeah, that, he was, yeah. like, that was his excuse of not being able to really open up to her. And I wouldn't want to open up to her either. <laughs> I don't want to tell any woman anything. Her biggest, her biggest red flag to me was when that whole conversation went down with um, uh, Pat, uh, Alexander and Patrick when that rumor was spread that they only came to Love is Blind. Like they had girlfriends outside of this and they were only coming to Love is Blind for clout and, you know, to, you know, whatever. And they were, when they were done with Love is Blind, they were going back to their girlfriends. She took that conversation that was had amongst the ladies and she went back to Evandro and she just wouldn't let it go. She brought it up to him and then he was honest with her and said that he was talking to somebody before he came on Love is Blind. And then he told her he was going on Love is Blind and he was done with her. He ghosted, not ghosted her, but he like kind of like shut it down with her and whatever. And this crazy bitch couldn't let it go. And I'm saying to myself, at the end of the day, 
what I before I've met you, I don't give a damn if I went on the Bachelorette, the Golden Bachelorette, Love is Blind, whatever. What I did before I showed up, I could have had a whole ass relationship. I could have had a one night stand 24 hours before showing up to record the show. That does that has nothing to do with me if I go on the show and I meet you and fall in love with you. I may tell you, I'll be honest with you and tell you about it, but don't hold that shit against me because what I've done does not pertain to what we're doing here and now. And I think he tried to communicate that to her, but she was not letting it go. She was just going in. When your own sister knows that you're batshit crazy, you're batshit crazy. Yeah, they let her get away with that. Um, we've time. seen that before on other shows where the bad, you know, the the bad seed of the relationship actually gets off scot free. I don't know why they choose. He, I didn't care for him only because of the, the the lie. If you're not ready to expose yourself or tell your secrets or whatever, don't go on a show Gosh. because those things are going to come out whether you like them or not. Because people are going to dig. Period. So, you know, her whole reaction to the whole phone thing and just not, she just, it was how she, it was, because it wasn't just that incident. It was how she dealt with every single thing. She came in wanting to pick a fight with him, you know, she after they married left. To him. She did yeah. not want to be married to him. No, so just leave, you know? Yeah, but. It, wasn't, it, was, it was not only just her picking a fight with him. It was her picking a fight with everybody. Everybody, yep. She had yep. issue with she had issues with everybody on the show. Period. And talk down to everyone. And for what was her name? Um, Mick. She went to M, and she was with the I forget what guy she was, but she was like, she says things it's disrespectful, but then she immediately apologized. How how often does that work? I, I we never saw her apologize, but if you say she apologized, okay. But we've seen her consistently miss you know, um, mistreat everybody, be totally disrespectful, loud and obnoxious and say very hurtful things and then go storming off like a baby. That's the type of maturity you want around you? No, no, no. And she got off that, free. Listen, and the fact that you storm off and then get offended because you storm off, you have this fucking adult ass tantrum, you storm off and then you come back and then you're mad. Because nobody, you, you didn't even come find me. You didn't even, you didn't even come after me. I don't chase a motherfucking soul, bitch. That would have been me if I was a dude. If I was fucking Evandro, I'd have been like, bitch, you on your own. You want to fucking have a fucking adult <laughs> tantrum? You go ahead and walk your ass on. I ain't chasing a goddamn fucking soul. Go have your fucking moment when you're ready. If you want to come back, then come the fuck back and we can have an adult conversation. Otherwise, Keep it moving, bitch. That's what I would have said to her. But Evandro can't say that because Evandro is a black man. She, the way she talked down to him, she was talking to him like he had he was stupid, and he was taking it, and he was. And then I was so glad that he fought when when she finally emasculated him in front of the group at the pool, and he was. I, I kept yelling at the TV. I'm like, brother. Get your ass. That bitch ain't all of that. Fuck her. Keep it moving. And he fucking got up and went upstairs and packed his bag and wrote her his little, her little letter. And I was like, get your shit, get the gone, and don't ever come back. But did you notice that at the reunion, they tried to make it look like or sound like she left him? Yeah. It was like, no, he left her. He left her. You know, but they kind of like just kind of scooted past that and said, you know, you know, well, we, we just wanted to know if you went back to him after you left him. She didn't leave him. She didn't leave him. And then, no, and then they, they went a step further and and asked him. He's the one that, let you like you said, Ashita, he left her ass. Mm -hmm. And then instead of saying, posing the question to Ariella and saying, you know, he left. And he left you the letter. Have you heard from him since? They went right to him. Did you reach out to her? As if, as if this bitch is all that in a bucket of chicken. Like he needs to reach out. And I was disgusted when he fucking said, you know, yeah, I did reach out to her. And then she got on her high horse. 
Yeah, I got the message and I didn't respond. And I was like, bro. I was like, I was like talking to him like brother. Really? Yeah. Like that yeah. bitch. Yeah, that bitch like that. serious fucking mental issues. When your own sister and your father, let's and not get it father. twisted. When when he went and met her people, them motherfuckers was like, good luck. Good luck, champ. <laughs> Who's I next? hope you're happy. I hope you know, like basically in so many words, I, I hope you know what you're getting into. Take this bitch off our hands. We're done, you know, being the therapist for this crazy ass bitch. Who's next? Let's go to, um, who do we got? Well, I guess we'll go to Mariella and Patrick. Both said no. I, I like the way that they did it at the wedding. They both said no. Mm -hmm. Now. Um, okay, but at the reunion, at the reunion, they're not okay. but Patrick showed his ass because I guess the rumor was true about he Patrick. went back to his girl. He went right back to his old bitch. He went back to baby. Yep. Wait, he went back wait, to his ass. baby's a guy. You didn't see baby, his roommate. It's a guy. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. That's the bald headed weird. guy. His name is Baby. That's right. His roommate's name is Baby. But wait a minute. Is that the ex? Baby. That was his roommate's name is Baby. That's right. I and remember. Every time you watch Baby, baby and, and he talks about wanna watch Baby's face. No, no, no. That's Alexandra's. That's Alexandra's roommate. But watch Baby's face when Alexandra's. Oh, I'm sorry. My, Patrick. But that's, Patrick, that's Patrick too, to me, is is a little does this give you the vibes? I don't know. I don't know what I I, I didn't like his him. His just hair looks fun. awful too. His new hair looks awful. Well, I thought it wasn't finished. That he just got the surgery. So he's he waiting for it to grow in. Yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hair wasn't even really that bad because no. he, he yeah. just had like maybe right. some thinning. He had like a little thinning or whatever, a little patch. So for me, I'm like, if you're so obsessed about that, to the point where, to the point where, when we get married, you are you are going to wear a hat, a fucking ball cap to our wedding, a if baseball I, cap backwards, baseball cap backwards. If I'm wearing a friggin' custom gown or a gown oh, it doesn't have to be custom but a wedding gown lace hair makeup nails shoes the whole night and your rusty ass shows up with a fucking sneakers you know how i already feel about men that fucking wear suits and sneakers and then he's got this hat turned to the back i would have fucking turned around and walked out as soon as i showed up saw him standing at the altar i'd have turned around and walked away i'd have been like then that shave your head. head. That is secure. Yeah. Then shave your head. But but a hat looks stupid. A hat looks stupid. It looks dumb if you have to wear a hat like a ninety day fiance. The same dude had to wear a hat for everything, even in bed. Yeah. Then I shave, if you don't, if you don't have your, then shave your head. Shave yeah. your head. Because his, his head was essentially bald when he showed it before yeah. the thinking. And it, it look, he didn't have a bad shaped head. No. If you're that insecure about your hair. Shave it. What else are you insecure about? And herein lies the problem. If that, if I'm with a guy and he's so obsessed or insecure about his hair, what else are you? I don't have time to hold your hand and, you know, make you feel good about yourself. Figure your shit out. You should not be getting married. You should not be in a committed relationship. Figure your bullshit out. Figure your hair plug shit out. Get your fucking confidence back and then bring a fucking real relationship to relationship and marriage to the table. Stupid. And but the fact that he was getting up. He was getting up. He was sleeping in till like one o'clock in the afternoon. Then getting up every time you saw him, he was rolling, he was rolling a joint. Smoking weed. He was a he's a fucking weed in. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's very immature. He's not that, ready for marriage. It is, yeah. Because the weed thing to me, th that wasn't a big deal because you got people who drink every single day. But his thing was he did not have the maturity level. 
He, no. The baseball cap to me was just a, a symbolism of him not wanting to grow up past that bro life mentality, how he spoke with his friends. And like I said, no, not a problem, no shade on him. If that's, if, if that, you're stuck in that era, that's on you. But if you're trying to get married and build a life with somebody, you got to marry somebody on that level. Who's okay <laughs> with marrying a bro dude all day long. He was just too immature. And the and whole again, thing was why just. Is it with these men? Stop. I'm tired of seeing women that are willing and okay with being with a guy that they got a fucking mother. If your mother is okay, mom, that's that's on them. That's on his mother and on him. I ain't trying to be your goddamn mother. If you can't come into my life and help, you know, be, you know, be my yin and my yang or whatever the fuck. I'm not trying to be your fucking mother. I ain't raising nobody. I, don't, I haven't raised children. So I ain't raising a whole ass adult ass fucking man. Fuck that. Well, I think that's what she was basically saying throughout the the whole, all the episodes before before the reunion and why she said no. She tried to be as polite as possible. You know, I wish him the best. I wish him and his girl the best. I love him. What You know, but she also said we are not friends. <laughs> We don't talk. You know, I have gone on with my life. He's gone on with his life. But she she knew that she wasn't going to be a mother for him. When she said she had to do all the cooking and cleaning and all that. No, no. She was not about that life. And she wasn't even a favorite of mine. But she was smarter than she was smarter than the other two that said yes. I kind of liked her personality. I think she had like a really cool personality. She seemed like she was fun. She she her personality. Mar- Marilla? No, um, Mariella. Mariella? Mariella? Yeah, Mariella. Like, she was giving me, like, the way that her personality was, she was giving me, like, I could hang out with her. Like, I could sit and have a glass of wine with her and talk shit and laugh and listen to some music, whatever. But I already knew that shit was getting old real quick. I mean, that shit was getting old on day one after the honeymoon, honeymoon, and they moved into the new apartment. And he, she was like, oh, my God, he's, he doesn't wake up until, like, 1 o'clock. And I'm sitting here, I'm doing my crossword puzzles by myself. I'm cleaning, I'm cooking, I'm doing this. And I'm saying to myself, girl, just imagine if he marries you, you're going to be wiping his ass next. I still can't tell if she's attractive or not. I haven't decided yet if she's attractive or not. She's like, because like, even with her personality, I can't, I I can't can't wrap my head around. I don't hate her. But yeah. no, I don't even want to hang out with her for too long because she seems she, like she has a lot of bitch vibe to her. And not I like like her. If she doesn't like you, you'll know she doesn't like you. That's you know why I, mean? I like her. Because I, no, I'm like, I can fucking, I can, I can kick it with, I can kick it well, with her. Look back. how she treated the, the, the crazy girls. No, she's, I don't think she's a sincere person. Right. Like when I say bitch vibe, she's just, she's, She's like the the person that's gonna stab you in the back. She's too. She seems very two faced. Yes, they, that's a better word. She's uh, yeah, I didn't get that. I didn't get that. But at the end of the day, with 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 regards to um, what's her name, crazy ass Ariella, then you would you wouldn't have liked me if I was on the show and I had to deal with a a, a personality like Ariella. I would have probably been the villain of the show because I I could I can't hold my tongue with women like that. I'd be like. You could her- respectfully shut her down and then not deal with her. Yeah, I, I wouldn't deal with her either. Oh, yeah, I would not deal with her. If I'm thrown on a reality show that I have to deal with her, I'm going to tell that bitch how it is, period, end of story. And I don't give a damn who likes me or not. You're fucking psycho. That's what I would have told her ass. Take your crazy train ass to therapy because your ass don't need to be here trying to fucking get married at fucking love is blind at first sight. Fuck out of here. She's fucking crazy. That's with all these reality shows now. These people come to bring their shit to the table. Handle your fucking shit before you come up in here. But that's one thing on, especially on TikTok. I don't know about any other platform. They were saying how Netflix and love is blind dropped the ball with um, the girl who claimed, what's her name again, that claimed um, she was raped? Or said, Ingrid. Ingrid. 
they said that they really dropped the ball and it might be a lawsuit, but I, I can't see how you say that it was on them because they were saying, you know, well, it was on them because they didn't do a, a thorough enough check. Well, what's the thorough enough check to make sure that he can get it up? How, how, how do you check for something like that? When you sign up for these particular shows and you married him and you married him, you, th that was your package at that. And it, it ended, it wasn't, didn't happen on the show happened after you married him and you went home and, we, and was living together for a while. Then she didn't, she talked about it in a roundabout way. She never came out and. Right. Uh, she so never you came don't out know 100% what happened. happened. She basically was talking in riddles where we're all sitting there like, cause I'm sitting there and I'm like, what is she, what is she trying to say? Like, I'm so, I'm assuming everybody was watching it. Like, what are you insinuating, Ingrid? Like, did he attack you? Did he rape you? What's going on? And then it was like, so then that he, they were both gone. So Netflix pulled, made that decision. They didn't come back when it mm -hmm. came. I mean, they moved on to the next couple. And then the next thing you know, they're showing the sofas. He's gone and Ingrid's gone. They didn't bring their asses back because I'm, I'm assuming Netflix was like, they said she, no, they said it's her. She shut it down because she wasn't going to do it anymore. That's what they said. Yeah, but they, they got they asked him to leave. Him. Yeah, make them leave. You know, these are some serious, you know, allegations. And if she's not going to be here, then you should leave. So I don't yeah. know who's next. Let's talk about Renata and Alex. Oh, Lord. Yes. Renata and Alexander, who are. In the, they said yes, but they're still together in a non-monogamous friendship, really, and they don't live together. In the kiss that she gave him, to you know, it, it was stupid. Like he said, I wasn't even expecting that. Yeah, because you don't live together. Y'all hook up every once in a while, and it's not even consistently hooking up. It was like, why did they let them get away with that? I guess that was the, and she went through this whole speech about how all women should be like her living on her own terms. And I'm like, no, you're you, living you're as a single woman. Do. Again, you're living as a single woman. You're, you're, you know, I don't know what this kind of conversation. Great. Yeah. I don't know what kind of conversation her and Alexander had. I don't know who was the deciding factor in this, but at the end of the day, either we're going to be fucking married or we're not. Right. We're either going to be married and we're going to make this work, especially when there's a, a child involved or we're just going to be friends and we'll just be friends, period. Just going to be buddies. And if it works out in the future, if we like circle back and we're like, oh, well, you know, let's, let's, let's try this again. Great. But what I'm not going to do is be like, oh yeah, we're still together, but we're in like a monogamous friendship. No, I ain't got time for that. I got, I got. And why, can't, why kiss him though? Why kiss yeah. like well, you well, know, what's the what's the point of and she's just extra and she I guess she you know she probably did it for the dramatic effect. Who cares? She's stupid. He's dumb too. Yeah. To, that, he, that was, to, that was to allow that. To allow well, I guess I mean he's a man and he's like, I guess I got the best of both worlds. Like I can be out in the street and I have my I'm still living with baby and I can go out and bang all these women. And she can do whatever the fuck she wants. And if I'm lonely one random Friday night, I can call her up and either go as go my to wife. Her. Yeah, as my wife, I can go to her house and blow her back out, or she can come to mine and I can blow her back out. It's just retarded. Excuse me, I know that's not you know PC, but it's it's stupid. Yeah, it was stupid. I don't I don't know why they let them get away with that narrative. It was just. Yeah, I try to I try to look at it from a culture thing. Like I'm like, okay, this is Love Is Blind Brazil, so I try to look at it from, you know, their culture. Like maybe this is something that they're used to. Because by me personally, I'd be like, either I'm single or I'm married. Yeah, I mean, there's no there's no gray matter in that. I'm gonna be single and I'm gonna do what the fuck I want, or I'm gonna be married and I'm gonna fucking be the best wife that I can be. But I don't think it was a cultural thing. I think she was, like she was saying, this is the new way couples do things. 
So it was nice. it was just something that she made up. A they, a yeah. narrative that they tried to 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 make it sound like it was hip or something to for what? Because no one else stayed together. So you could easily just say right. we're not together. It, it was just just dumb for no reason. Or or they could have just said, you know what? We still love each other. Like I love him as a person. He loves me as a person, but we're just not ready to have this marriage, but we're still courting each other and kind of like, you know, seeing where this yes. is going to go. I mean, at this point, it just, just be fucking friends. Jesus Christ. I don't understand why it's so fucking hard for some people. Yeah, well, they made it hard. So yeah. I guess that was it. Is that, oh, no, it's there's not. The, the number one couple. When there's like there's um, Vanessa and Leonardo, which was, that's going to be quick because they said yes at the wedding and they're still together and they're like both lawyers and they're I didn't I didn't see that their best life thoughts on that I like that I like that so the, the thing is with them and I I liked her too because she really stayed out of the fray she was close mm -hmm. to, to to the women or whatever but she she was another one of those those, those part of the couple where she was like I'm here for some serious business and I'm going to take care of my business and these people are crazy. They, I I was, I was like, it would have been a shocker to me if they had been, if they had broke up, but they really came out as like one of the best couples I've seen yeah. on any, any love is blind. I agree. And I, and I, there was so many times I was like, I know they're thinking it, this is not going to work. Veronica, they were pretty Vanessa? Cute. Yeah, no, I knew that she was. I knew both of them were. They both were just really good people. They just seemed like very good people. Yeah, I could be friends with her easily. Yeah, same, same. And uh, I, I knew that they, I knew that they would, I knew that they would be good. And they that unless something like crazy happened before the wedding, mm -hmm. I knew that they were good. When remember when they went to the um. The, the lunch or dinner with her friends. And it turned out that her friend, Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Her friend's husband, her friend and her friend's husband are friends with him. Mm -hmm. And they're all lawyers. Like the whole group are friggin' lawyers. So they're friends with him and they're like, Oh my God. And her friend was like, Oh my God. He's, she confirmed he is who he is. He's a yeah. nice guy. And he just, you know, he is who he is. There's nothing inauthentic about him. So I knew that that was going to work. So I, I like that. I it hope was, it's actually them. good that they picked them because, yeah, none of the other couples made you feel any type of. They genuinely made you feel like, oh, that right. that's love. You felt it. The other one's trash. Yeah, that relationship gave me hope. Like I liked, like that relationship was like had me like in my feels, like oh maybe. You know, that, and they also know, the, the, the religion this. thing brings them together too. Yeah, you the know what? the religion yeah. thing. The, the religion thing. Oh yeah, them. that did that did. You I know, was they I were was, perfect for each other. They looked yep. great. They were both loving. She yep. head over heels like that's my man. Yeah, she's beaming every time she's on. She's like that's my man, and he's like, she's like, remember that there was and the, one of the interstitials. She he's standing over and she's and she said, "Do you like how I look or something like that?" And he goes like, "You have to ask or something like that." Mm -hmm. And he gets so that he sees this like this, and he grabs. He was like, I, "You know," she's like, "Do you think I'm pretty or something like that?" And he's like, "Really?" And he just fucking kisses her. I was like, "Go oh, ahead." Hey, remember, I was trying to find a I negative with him. I was trying to find a negative with him, and I just couldn't do yeah. it. Yeah, he's good. Shahida, I'm gonna have to go back to you on this one because. I, I I I agree with you. Um, if I had a Leonardo, like if I was what's her name Vanessa, if I was mm -hmm. Vanessa and I had a Leonardo, I would be like, that's my. I'd be like, that's my man. That's my man. Fuck all your couches. I don't give a shit what kind of drop. <laughs> Me and Leonardo would be sitting like cuddling at the pool party, and we I'd be looking at him like. Boo boo, we ain't getting involved in this shit. It's me and you, me and you. Maybe now, she if I was, stuff to make them feel better about this shitty relationship. Exactly. 
If I had, if I was in love or I knew that I had a quality man like that mm-hmm. upon me that was like giving me that what Leonardo was giving Vanessa, I'd be like, I, I'm going to keep, I'm going to be my, I'm going I'm to reel in my ladiness and I'm going to shut my mouth and I'm going to sit here and sip my little wine and my champagne and watch all this fuckery around and look at my baby and be like, kiss me, daddy. Let's go back to the room and have sex. So do whatever. And let's not involve ourselves in this bullshit. But if I was like Renata with Alexander or Mur- Muriala, Marilia and Patrick, oh, I'd be all neck deep in that drama because this dude ain't for me. I would know right off the rip that this man ain't for me. So I'd be all up in the drama. And Patrick didn't want Renata either. It was like, why didn't you just say it? No, Alexander didn't, didn't want Renata. Alexander didn't want. Yeah, I'm getting you all mixed up. He didn't well, want. Again, her. It's leading me to believe that the rumor was true. Like, yeah, like that's what I, I, I think it was. I mean, it was was stating facts that to both Patrick and Alexander were were had were dating. Or had people waiting for them. <laughs> Men. Oh, well, yeah, that's not, and again, that's why I'm retired. Because I'm, I'm done with you men. You men ain't shit. But I love no, you, Chris. We're no, waiting on the men. He said the they're vibe. waiting on men. The vibe. What did you say, Chris? Men. Yeah, I heard you. They're both they're both making waiting on men. Alexander's oh, waiting on that okay, baby, okay, and Patrick. Okay. And Patrick was a little. I was like, he never showed one interest in. Anyway, well, you know, anything wrong with that? right though, because I mean, how do you how are you gonna be a whole ass grown ass man with a roommate, and you're calling your roommate baby? No, his name is Baby. That's what he called. Oh, what is that like? Is that his and, what, and if you watch, if you watch snip clips of just that thing, watch baby's reaction to everything. Watch baby's to reaction back. to everything. I have to go back. I have to go back because I was, I was like, I, we had an uncle named Baby, and then I was, and then I, then I was watching Patrick, and Patrick, and and putting him in that, and putting him in like, and I was like, okay, 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 okay. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Whatever. Yeah. I, I, think I, we, I think we well, I mean, it was an okay season. It was an okay it, season. It was a good season. I'm all with it. Was it. Okay. What was? I'm trying what? to think. What country we watched a Love Is Blind, and it was. I know Japan. I know Sweden. Japan. Was really good. Sweden. 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 Sweden, girl. Sweden, and it ain't Sweden. back yet. It's not back yet. So the okay. UK version is coming. The Love Is oh, Blind UK. UK. Oh, it's coming. But not wait a minute. Month. There is a new show on Netflix. It's called Boyfriends. The Korean show? Japan. 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 Okay. Is it and good? I literally, and the only reason why I know I, I saw it was because last night, me and my nephew were like looking, we we're like, oh, let's watch something on Netflix or Prime or whatever. And um, we're on Netflix and I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And I was, you know, because the algorithm and I'm like, I, I'm looking at him and I'm like, no judgment. Like, don't judge me of my algorithm of the, of the shows that I watch. Cause it was all like crazy ass reality shit. And the boyfriend, he's like, Oh, what about the boyfriends? And I'm like, is that like a series? Like a, oh, like, it's a reality like, show. I played the friggin', it's a, it's a reality show about For guys men in yeah. Japan. And I was like, Ooh, I gotta watch that. I got that on my list to watch. Cause I thought, you know, because when you think of other countries, like outside of the United States, some a lot of countries, homosexuality is like a crime. Yeah, I was surprised to see it. I was going to watch it, but I didn't. Um, I had someone watch it. You I all need I'm... to watch Supercell. That's all I'm going to say. You know what? I have Supercell on my on my list to watch. It was, um, and I'm going to watch it because you said it was so good. Compared to Tyler Perry's new movie that just came out. Did you all watch that? Love no. Divorce in the Black? No, I did not. And all I, right. I am not. All I'm going to say to this is the first scene. The first seven minutes. Somewhat, okay, a co worker of mine, actually, my, my boss was, uh-huh. you no, know, she's one of us. So she was like, you, she's like, did you watch? Because we always talk about different shit we watch on the, the streaming. And she's like, 
have you seen Tyler Perry's Divorce in the Black? And I'm like, no, but I heard about it. And I saw Corey Hardrick on GMA. She's like, um, and I said, I'm not really, and I told her, I'm not really big on Tyler Perry. I'm like, I'm kind of over it. And I was like, it's kind of the same shit all the time. If it ain't my dear, it's some bullshit drama. And she's like, oh, watch the first seven to eight minutes. She's like, I had to turn it off. She's like, I went back to it. She's like, I went back to it eventually. She's like, but the first seven to eight minutes, I was like, why is he doing us like this? And I'm like, because it's Tyler Perry, boo. Then here we are. Chris, Did you I watch the whole thing, though? No, I didn't, I didn't watch it at all. I haven't seen it. Oh, I thought you saw it. Okay. Oh, yeah, she, was telling me, she was telling me to watch the first seven to eight minutes, like the first, the first like seven to eight minute scene. She's like, she's like, and she's a Christian woman. Like she's a Southern, she's from Georgia. She's all into the church and all that. She's like, when I tell you I had to shut it off and take a beat. And I was like, well, I'm not really like religious, but I haven't watched it yet though, but I might watch it tonight or tomorrow morning. What Supercell? Did you, you watch? Did you watch the? You know what? I will the, bring that up, six, and I'll have a me and Storm will watch it. The six schizophrenic thing. Did you watch that? What? Which one? The six schizophrenic brothers out of the twelve brothers. Oh my God! It's a family. Oh, is, that on, is that on a Netflix? Family of, a family of yeah, family of twelve. I, 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 I six saw of it. them are schizophrenic, and it's and the the girls are talking about growing up with. Six schizophrenic brothers. Oh my Jesus! It's why it's, why it's 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 a story. Did you oh, watch? I... Tell me that you love me. Yes, I did not. Shahida, you need to watch that shit. It's only three episodes. Only three. We okay. got to talk about that next time, next week. That's being wild. That is something that had me like, what in the absolute holy. I watched this, the the first episode of the second season of Roommates from Hell. I heard that's good. I saw the previews and I was like, I was scared to watch it because it's like, it's like that show and on Investigation Discovery, Nightmare Next Door, or oh no, what's it? Um, Neighbors from Hell. I think they got Neighbors like from Hell. Neighbors from Hell. I'm like, I, I hate to watch those shits because I'm like, oh my god, I don't want that to be my life, and like. Um. Roommates from hell. I'm just that should that should bless you. Did y'all watch Beverly Hills Cop? Yes, I, I did. Liked it. I did. You hated it. You said you loved it. No, I you liked it. it. I liked it too. I didn't think it was bad. It was such an eight, literally an eighties film. I love, and that's why I loved it. Yeah, because it paid homage. I, it paid homage to the original Beverly Hills Cop, and I I love the fact that when he showed up to um. Back to Beverly Hills in the captain's office. Oh no, I'm sorry. In Detroit, in in the captain's office, they there was a picture, like an eight by ten picture of the black captain. Remember the original black captain when oh, he was in, in the original, the first um, Beverly Hills Cop, where uh-huh. the, the, it was the black captain that was like, so, and he was all ignorant with him, like, what the mm-hmm. hell are you doing? They had a picture and they had Eddie Murphy strategically placed in the office. And then he there was a picture of him and I was like, oh my God, that's the original captain. I was like, I loved it. I know. I went back and watched the original. The reason I liked it is because it was light. It was yes. funny. I wasn't expecting that's a right. whole lot. And it was that's just like, you know, I just want a good feel good, chill out type movie. So yeah. I, I, I thought he did better than what I had heard. Like one person I follow on um, threads was just like, I watched the first 10 minutes and it was the worst and this and that. And he just went and everybody went in on him. Like, dude, you, you could not have surmised all of that in 10 minutes of that show. And it's true. It wasn't that bad. I thought it was pretty. All I'm going to say is in watching it, I'm looking at Eddie Murphy, who is 60, what? Three, 63 years old. And he looks damn good as opposed to his co-stars that are either probably the same age as him or maybe a year or two younger than him. They probably be dead. Okay? So I'm like, I was like, go ahead, Eddie. Black don't crack. Here we are. Cause she 
the girl doing the most. The woman, the girl, the sister, the daughter. Awful. I thought she was awful. I thought she was horribly. She did not act her way out of the people back. She was disinteresting to me. I didn't. She was cute. That's about it. Oh, okay. I mean, There's a lot I, of other actresses that could bring something else to it. She brought, to me, brought nothing to it. Nothing to it. I thought she, she did. Was, I thought she did a good job. Maybe she knew like somebody. Her. And yeah. I liked her in that movie. movie. Maybe she knew somebody. You know, There's I don't another know. movie she was in. Shahida, what movie was that? The movie the when she played the stripper. Do you remember that one? It was based off of a TikTok story. Uh, not, uh, oh, the, the, uh, the, the J-Lo. Wasn't it a J-Lo movie? No, 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 no. This was based off of a oh, yeah, 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 yeah. that was told right. on um, right. Twitter. It was based off a Twitter story, one of the first ones, and they made it into a movie. And I thought she did get in that, too. I, I thought I she have never seen that girl. I, I don't yeah. even know who she... I mean, I, when outside of the Eddie Murphy movie... Beverly Hills Cop Foley. I would. I didn't know who she was. So did you see Eddie Murphy's real daughter in it? Yep, and her and her husband. Yep, yep, yep. So I liked it. It was good. I liked. I, I don't want the actress. I wasn't expecting anything crazy. I yeah, will say did. this: it was it was a hundred percent better than the reboot of Coming to America. They could have just left Coming to America alone. That's all. I'm I was like Coming to. I like. I mean, I stopped to finish Beverly Hills because I turned off after a half an hour. I was like, okay. But I thought the coming to America was not, it was strictly an homage again. And it was like, okay, and it was what they were going to do. They just kind of expanded on it. Okay. I didn't hate it. I was just like, I didn't love it. This is yeah. what I, I feel about this. I was like, oh, they're just really remaking how 80s flicks that don't really make any sense. And like, you got to really like, He's going to talk his way into everywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he did. That's what he does. It's Eddie fucking Murphy. Come on. But you can, that's what I'm saying. In the 80s, those have, we're so much into believability now of how things oh, could be. Know. In terms of like how Batman, when Christian Bale's Batman came out and they saw how Batman became Batman, I was like, oh, that is true. A guy could do that. If so and so and so and so and so and so, that's two different kind of genres, though. No, I'm talking it's about the believability of having facts of going. Okay, if you just have a Batman and say, "Oh, he just," I'm talking about the you know giving the reasons behind why something could happen and go. Okay, well, I could see that happening with this. I was like, he talked. He's gonna talk his way into here and to here and to here and and go into the hey. What are you guys doing in here? And then sprays them with the fire extinguisher, and they come after him. There's, I'm like, okay, it's an you know, 80s. I'm like, I like it's that. An 80s, you know it's an why? 80s. And that's why. That's and what they did in the 80s. Like All those it. 80s films. You're like, okay, those two old guys are, and they, he's driving in the. He steals the the male worst person's cart. She sprays him with with pepper spray, and he can still see. That he's was like, cool. and I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> It's an 80s movie, okay? That's what I'm saying. I, 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 I like, in that context, but I kind of wanted something. No, I didn't want anything more than that. I wanted what I, from being. I said, I, said, I said, I wanted something. We know you know. And I said, I wanted something. Yeah, more. No, I agree. I, listen, it is what it is. I um, I liked it. I liked it. But what I, I so I'm I so now that you said all of that, I'm really interested to see what you say about Supercell. Um, I've heard a couple of criticisms, like people felt like that it was hard for them to get into. Whereas for me, it was like the first the first episode. I was just like, "What's where are we going? Where are we going?" But by the end of the first episode, I was hooked. And it's a young black writer and director, so you okay. know. And I think they did a phenomenal job taking. And then even the characters, they're not like all gangbangers or something like that. They do have yeah. one guy who is a gangbanger in there. But they, you know, they're kind of like well-rounded, you know, black Londoners, you know, telling, you know, telling their story and how they go. And I thought he did a really good job. I hope that if there's a season two, he doesn't let people get in his ear and try and change up his formula or the, the way that he um, wrote his characters, because then you can ruin it. But it was good. It was only what, six episodes. Okay. And 
You show up watch. It's not a superhero show good. right now because they're just discovering their powers. Mm-hmm. That they have these like you know powers, and he's trying to get them all together. It was I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it. I, I've heard nothing but good things about it, so I'm gonna oh, watch okay, it. Okay, that's good. It's just, it's just finding the time to sit my ass down. Well, and watch yeah, because it. it's six. It's so six hours because it's six episodes. But it no, was. I'll, I'll make sure. I'll make sure to have it watched by next week when we. Record. And I watched it twice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now. So I watched it. I binged it on the Fourth of July, and then like a week later. I well a couple of days later I just started watching it as I was getting ready for work you know in the morning so I ended up watching it for that whole week a second time to kind of check what I missed but it was good I liked it I can't wait I'll watch it all right so anything else no I got nothing I'm gonna watch Super Cell and I'm gonna watch Boyfriends on Netflix okay what about you Chris that's it yeah, I'm two episodes behind on House of Dragons. I'm going to watch that. I've been watching The Bear, the third season. I'm halfway yeah, through that. I haven't, haven't started yet. What you think? It, I, am in, I am in mid-season two, so shh. Oh, I this just want to know how you're two? feeling about season three. Is it good? So far? I think a lot of criticism. Yeah, season two was really good. Yeah. Season better two than season awesome. one. Yeah. Season three is intense. I heard intense too. Okay, intense so far. Say okay. nothing about House of the Dragon because I have not started the newest season yet. Because I have to go back and watch the last two episodes of the first season to catch up. Yeah, I didn't finish the first season, and I don't I know. Did, if but I did. But of course, HBO and all these streaming services wait for fucking ever until they bring out the new season, and I forget what the fuck happened. Well, so I, go watch I don't think I'm gonna season. bother. I don't think I'm going to bother. It didn't get me. What I have been told is that the first couple of episodes of the latest season were kind of like slow dragon, like boring. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was like episode, like the latest episode that, no, not this, what's today, Sunday? Not last week's, last Sunday's episode was epic. So say nothing. No, I didn't see anything. I can't say a word. All right, it. folks, with that, we are out. Till next time. I know I, we got to figure out what we're going to talk about next time. There are no reality shows on now. I'm okay. watching Love Island on, on Peacock. Till next time. Bye. Bye. Still